Just think, Lizzie. In two weeks' time, we'll be married and living in Sligo. And you'll be in a uniform and I'll be baking cakes for you. (laughs) I won't be expecting that. I'm not like your brothers. You can sit around doing nothing all day if you like. (laughs) Oh, I love you, Tomas Barry. And I'm fierce fond of you, Lizzie (laughs) O'Neill. Oi! (laughs) (laughs) Fractured. A family, a nation, a dream. March 1922. Move your arm there, Tom. Thanks. Will you be much longer? I'm just finishing up the leak slip list. I want to get supper on the table. I won't be long, Betty. You're spending an awful lot of time on this. I have a lot of catching up to do. You're out all day and then you're up half the night. It'll get easier, I promise. I saw more of you when you were in the RIC, so I did. Uh, This job is safer. With the treaty signed, you could get a position with the new Irish Civic Guards. We've been through this. Would you not just give it a try? No. But you'd be an Irishman working for the Irish Guards. Stop now, Betty. You worked as a policeman all your life. It's a job you were good at. Hughes and Stiff died on my watch. I wasn't that good. It was hardly your fault. Would you not at least apply? For Christ's sakes, Betty. Sorry, love. Sorry. I did apply. Oh? And? I wasn't wanted. They said that? They said they weren't sure where my allegiances lie. What? They said that I never showed any sympathy for the volunteers during the struggle, so they owed me nothing. Oh, Tom. Love, why didn't you tell me? Maybe I felt a bit ashamed. There's no shame in that. It's their loss. I don't mean... Look, I think... In that moment I saw myself as they did. An Irishman who took money from the English to fight my own people. You were trying to uphold the law. English law. We told ourselves we were just doing our job, but... I don't know. Maybe we should just leave here and... Make a fresh start. I have this insurance job now. You hate it. I'll get used to it. And Liam Costello said he made a good living on it. Well, he wasn't X or I see. How many people will drop away when they realise that you were? They'll forget in time. Like the new civic guards forgot? It'll always hang over you. Promise me you'll think about it. It better not be those little gurriers again shouting their insults. That's what I mean. People won't forget. They won't forget when I get my hands on them, that's for sure. Go easy, they're probably just children. In, now! What the hell are you doing? What's going on? Let me go! Who are you two? Get in there! I've a gun, get in! Jesus, Mary and Joseph! What is it you want? Get out of my house! Not until we get what we came for. And what's that? Information, missus. And we won't go until we get it. You won't be harmed if you cooperate. You come in with your faces covered waving a gun and you're saying you're not going to harm us? Not if you cooperate. The scarf didn't fool me when you raided the station that time and it's not fooling me now. You may as well take it off, Sean. Sean! Barry! Bridget's son. It's a sorry state of affairs when a neighbour's son bursts into my house. Take off the scarf. Makes a change from you bursting into my mother's house to arrest me, doesn't it? But that was his job back then. He, he has nothing to do with the RIC anymore. If I hadn't got the tip off, your husband, my daddy's good friend, would have been very happy to throw me in a jail cell. And did you never wonder where the tip off came from? What? I sent that girl to your house, you fool. I was hoping you'd be quick enough to get out before I arrived. Did you hear that, Sean? A likely story. Sit down, the both of you. I'll do as I like in my own house. Sit down. We want the name of your informer. The one who has managed to scupper all of our plans of the last while, including one as recently as two weeks ago. That's all done with now. Not for us, it's not. I know nothing about any informers. You ran the station in Maynooth for years. I did. And you received information regarding volunteer activities, didn't you? I had no dealings with any informers. You're telling us that in all that time you never met or weren't aware of any informers? Yes. We brought the gun with us for a reason. You're not going to shoot me. Not just you, no. You touch my wife and I swear to God. Just tell us what we want and we'll be gone. I know nothing. I'll ask again. Did you ever receive information about volunteer activities? For 
God's sake, Tom. Tell them what they want and be done with it. Information was passed to me, but it was always indirectly. Who passed it on? We'd mainly get word from Nace and sometimes from Dublin. An informer living in Minute would go to Nace or Dublin to pass on information? I suppose so. My arse. You just sat at your desk waiting to get the word. I didn't know any informers. I don't believe you, Mr Dwyer. I'm telling you. Was Bossy Kinsel an informer? <laughs> you wasted a bullet there. He was no more an informer than I was. You just said you didn't know any informers. How come you know that Mozzie wasn't one? I, I meant that, well, well, I knew Mozzie. He was always in and out of the station complaining about one thing or another. He hated everyone. Well, that doesn't rule him out. We're staying until we get the information we came for. Sit down there, Sean. You've set the table all nice, Mrs. Dwyer. <coughs> Whoops. Leave my things alone. By God, I'll... How many times do I have to tell you? I don't know. Did they get paid for passing on the information? Why does anyone do anything except for money? That's the difference between you and us. Who would this informer talk to in Nace? There's no point in asking me. And then you'd get... What? A letter or a phone call passing on the information? Yes. Which? A letter or a phone call? A phone call. From the same person? The officer in charge. It all sounds very vague, so it does. I've told you all I know. Where are all the RIC records? We were told to burn them all. That was handy, wasn't it? And you didn't keep any records of your own? I did not. Not even as a memento. Something to remind you of your great days in the RIC. What are all those papers on the table? They're private. None of your business. Don't touch them. Ah. Names, addresses, quantities of money paid. Maybe this is a list of informers. Put that down. It's got nothing to do with you. I wonder if we called on James Ryan, number six, St. Catherine's Park in Leakslip. Would he be able to give us any information? No, he wouldn't. It's for my new job. Leave it. You be careful now. Don't you touch my husband! Just stop your play acting and go. We'll go when we're done. Jesus! You know more than you're letting on. He doesn't know anything! Just leave my house now! I'm going to search upstairs. Don't you dare. Milani, cover them. Come back down here, now! Don't move, old man. Listen to him, Tom. Don't! But I can't just... They'll be gone just as soon as they know there's nothing to be found. Listen to your wife, Dwyer. Sit back down. Now. What's all the paper on the table for, anyway? My husband sells life insurance. They're his customers. Betty! (laughs) Him! An insurance salesman? Who'd have thought? I wouldn't say you have many customers in Minute, what? (laughs) Uh, That's a good one. It's honest work. What's he doing up there? If you do know something, you're better off telling us. Sean won't give up easily. This place will be smashed to bits. Am I to tell you till I'm blue in the face? Anything? Fuck all. There's nothing to find. And don't use that language in front of my wife. Oh, pardon me. Here's the deal. I know you know. And unless you tell us, we will shoot you. Won't we, comrade? We won't have a choice. Sean, I've known you since you were a small lad. And now I'm a big lad. And not stupid enough to believe your lies. Name of the informer. Now. Sean, please don't hit him. If you know anything, tell them. Nothing is worth this. (laughs) Listen to your wife. I'll not have anyone's blood on my hands. It never bothered you to have volunteer blood in your hands. You'll have to shoot me. Don't say that, Tom. Sean, please. What would your mother say? Maybe I'll shoot your wife. (gasps) Don't touch her! (gasps) Don't try that again, Dwyer. If you've any prayers to say, missus, you'd better say them now. (gasps) Tom! He means it. I can't stop him. Oh, Jesus. Just the name. Let my wife go first. Tell us. Then I'll let her go. All right, all right, all right. We're waiting. Tick tock. Just tell them. God forgive me. It's... It's Lizzie. Lizzie O'Neill. Lizzie? I don't believe you. You've got your name. It's not my problem if you don't like it. Now let my wife go. Go, you bitch. <laughs> You're sure it's Lizzie O'Neill. Why would she... The truth hurts. She played you well, so she did. You and your little brother. She's a clever girl. No. She likes the moss. You got what you came for. 
Now get out of my house. I don't know how you can be your mother's son. You're a disgrace! Says the bitch of an RIC man. I'll tell everyone about this! No one will believe you. And if either of you warn Lizzie what's coming, you'll never rest a night easy in your beds. You bastards. And here, a shilling. You were paid for the information. (laughs) Jesus, what are we going to do about Lizzie? Leave Lizzie to me. Fractured is a Down at Heel production. All episodes were written by Joe Bergen, Brendan Farrell, Claire Joyce and Martina Riley. Sound engineer is Brendan Farrell. Fractured is supported by Kildare County Council through a bursary from Creative Ireland. It is also supported by the County Kildare Decade of Commemorations Programme and the Department of Tourism, Culture, Arts, Gaeltacht, Sport and Media under the Decade of Centenaries 2012-2023 initiative.